Hello, welcome. In this video, let us look at the sufficient statistic required for estimation of parameters of a uniform distribution. So, the problem statement can be described as follows. Given observations x of n that are generated from the uniform distribution with the parameters minus theta plus theta, the, the PDF has a rectangular structure starting from minus theta to plus theta where the value of the PDF is given by 1 by 2 theta. The probability density function has a value 1 by 2 theta within the interval minus theta to plus theta. Outside the interval, it is all zero. So, given this PDF and the, given these observations, uh, let us assume there is a set of observations x equal to x of n with n is equal to 0 to n minus 1. That means we have a sample of size n. What is the sufficient statistic for the question is, what is the sufficient statistic for estimation of the parameter theta? So, the goal, determine the sufficient statistic for estimation of theta, the parameter of the uniform distribution. So, let us look at the solution. So, the first step is to write down the uh, joint likelihood of the data set. That means, f of x given the parameter theta, which is actually the product of the individual PDFs, n equal to 0 to n minus 1, f of xn given the parameter theta. This is only valid as long as the data x of n are IID. That means identical and independently distributed data. Identical and independently distributed. So, when x of n are IID, then the joint likelihood can be written as the product of individual likelihoods, f of xn. So, since uh, the PDF is given as 1 by 2 theta within the interval, we can rewrite this product as follows. So, product n equal to 0 to n minus 1 and then the value is given by 1 by 2 theta and then the value is only uh, non-zero for the interval. Uh, that means it is from minus theta to plus theta. In terms of functions, it can be represented as a difference between two unit steps. That means u of xn plus theta means minus u of xn minus theta. So, how do we get this? If you go back to the PDF, you can see that the first minus theta uh, is the starting of the interval and end of the interval is theta, right? So, this rectangle can be seen as a difference between two unit steps. First unit step is u of x of n plus theta. Second unit step is u of xn minus theta. So, once that xn minus theta, the unit step is subtracted, we are left with the rectangle. So, that is the joint likelihood function. Now, we can rewrite this function given the n samples as follows. 1 by 2 theta power n because this is a constant and we are multiplying it n times. So, it becomes 1 by 2 theta power n. The second part, the product n equal to 0 to n minus 1 of the rectangle can be rewritten as follows. The indicator function minimum of xi where it is greater than minus theta multiplied by another indicator function with the maximum of xi less than or equal to plus theta. So, how do we get this product uh, written in the form of two in, uh, indicator functions? Let us try to understand. So, given the original uh, PDF, which is from minus theta to plus theta, the data is, so given the sample x of n with n is equal to 0 to n minus 1. So, what happens is there are n uh, observations, right? So, these observations can be anywhere within this interval. So, this can be x1, this can be x2 and so on. So, anywhere from xn or x of n minus 1. So, whatever is the maximum value, that will be the rightmost boundary of the observations. Whatever is the minimum value, that will be the leftmost boundary. So, we can rewrite this uh, product n equal to 0 to n minus 1 of this rectangle as the product of two indicators. That means, one indicator function starting from the minimum value of xi. The other indicator function ending at the maximum value. 
So instead of uh, uh, beginning at minus theta and ending at plus theta, the rectangle now uh, spans from minimum of xi to maximum of xi. But this minimum of xi is always greater than or equal to minus theta, and this maximum of xi is always less than or equal to plus theta. So and then when you multiply these two uh, unit steps, one going in the right side direct right direction and one going in the leftward direction, when you multiply these two, you get the uh, joint likelihood of the data. So that's how we get the uh, uh, rewrite this product as a, pro a product of uh, these two indicator functions. So indicator basically means the region of space in which the function has a value, let us say one. Everywhere else it is zero. So an indicator is just a binary function in which uh, the when the condition is satisfied, the function value is one. When the condition is not satisfied, the function value is zero. So that's how we can rewrite this uh, uh, likelihood function in this uh, product form. Now. To determine the sufficient statistic, we go back to the Neyman Fisher factorization theorem. Neyman Fisher factorization theorem. Theorem. The theorem tells us that when you can write the likelihood function as a product of two functions, the first function is g of t of x and theta. And the second function is h of x. That means the first function is only a function of the statistic t of x, which will become the sufficient statistic later. And then the parameter theta. And the second function h of x, which has no contribution from the parameter theta. So if you can decompose the likelihood in terms of these products, then t of x is the sufficient statistic. Okay. So comparing this decomposition with the uh, decomposition that we have derived for the uniform distribution, we can clearly see that the, the, the factor 1 by 2 theta power n and then the indicator 1 and max of xi is less than theta, that is second function, they constitute the g of t of x. Therefore, f of x given theta for the uniform distribution can be written as 1 by 2 theta power n multiplied by the indicator function 1 for max of xi. Uh, less than theta, less than or equal to theta. So that should be our g of t of x and theta. And then the second part is the indicator function 1 with the minimum of xi greater than or equal to minus theta. So that should be our h of x. So we are able to decompose it in the required form in the uh, factorization prescribed by the name and Fisher factorization theorem. So, and if we by inspection we can clearly see that the sufficient statistic t of x is equal to the maximum of the sample, max of xi. So that will tell us uh, that it is the sufficient that is the statistic required for estimation of the parameter theta. So to summarize, in order to determine the unknown parameter theta of a uniform distribution given the sample of size n, we can use the Neyman-Fisher factorization theorem to determine the required sufficient statistic. So it uh, can be done as follows. The PDF, uh, the likelihood function is uh, written as the product of the individual likelihood functions under the condition or under the assumption that data are IID. And then this is a uniform distribution or the PDF is a uniform PDF. So it can be written as a product from n equal to 0 to n minus 1 when the actual PDF and uh, the support for the data is from minus theta to plus theta. So this function when we uh, multiply it for n data samples or n and this uh, and this product can be rewritten as the product of two indicator functions first indicator function uh, is related to the max of the data of the sample and the second indicator function is related to the minimum of the sample so and then this can be related to the uh, neyman fisher factorization theorem where we have this uh, likelihood should be decomposed as a product of two functions where the first one should be a function of only the sufficient statistic and the parameters and h of x should be independent of the uh, parameters. So we do identify the two functions for this particular example or for this particular uniform distribution model. So where g of t of x and theta is the is equal to 1 by 2 theta power n and then indicator function 1 where max of x i is less than theta. So that covers the maximum value of the sample. This part uh, helps us in determining the sufficient statistic p of x as the max of the sample. That is all. Thank you.